Okay, here's a quick video on how to set up the knobs on a Fanatec McLaren GT3 rim. So, uh, these knobs switch to 12 different positions, uh, and each position actually presses down a separate button uh, as you turn it. So, you know, position one's pushing down button number 53 or something like that. Um, so, when you want to map these knobs, there's two things to remember. One is that it pushes the button down as you turn to a slot. Um, and the second is that it never releases the button. So there's two ways to work around those problems. First off, if you say you want to map to position number one, a function to position number one, you, you have to start by turning it away from that to position number two. Then we come over here to the screen. We select the place we'd like to map it to, in this case the F1 black box. Uh, and then we turn it back to position number one, and that detects our button press here as 48. Now, if you notice, uh, it just gets stuck there because the button never released, so we never detect that the, that we've finished uh, the button. So the, the workaround in this case is you hit the enter key, and that will tag uh, that position to be, uh, uh, you know, to bring up the black box. So we'll go ahead and do that again for uh, position number two, bring up the F2 box, hit enter. Now we could quickly toggle between F1 and F2 uh, anytime we want. Now another option is to uh, combine these knobs with other buttons so that the button can have multiple uh, uses. So we'll do that for the F3 and F4 black boxes now. Well, yeah. So in that case, it's the same deal. Make sure our knob is set here, uh, not to the one we want. So we want to put F3 on position three. So we go here to position three. Now, uh, what we'd like to do is say that only when this knob's on position three and this neutral button's pressed, we're gonna bring up the black box. It's okay, so we're on position three, we're still waiting for input from our uh, control mapping. We go ahead and press this button. Uh, now it's marked as both buttons needing to be held down to trigger it, and we release, and that tags it automatically. Um, we're gonna do the same thing for that four, move it to position four, hold down the same button, Again, both detected and released. Okay, so let's see what that does. Okay, so if we're in the car, we switch this to position one, we bring up the F1 black box like we'd expect. When we switch it to position two, now we're bringing up the F2 black box. Now if we position it, switch it to position three, nothing happens because position three is keyed into this button here. So if I push, if it's on position three and I push this button, it brings up the relative box. If it's on position four and I push this button, it brings up the fuel box. Now if it's on any other position and I push this button, nothing happens. So this button only triggers, uh, in this case, when this knob is on position three or four. And now I've got a toggle that lets me repurpose that knob, I mean repurpose that button based on how I switched the toggle. So if I wanted this toggle in one position to be in-car controls, then all of these could adjust my in-car controls and put it in another position and they would be my communications. So I could hit, you know, so this could be pushed to talk in one situation and in another position this would be, you know, enter uh, your increment of value in the in-car controls. Anyway, that's the basics. Uh, I hope that's everything you guys needed to know and see you later. Bye.